go. Senator Markey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, very much for having this hearing. And uh, hopefully this will go better than Galileo because Galileo was put under house arrest, uh, Dr. Titley, in uh, 1633. <clears throat> and the Catholic Church did not issue an apology to Galileo until 1992. So we wish you a long life so that 359 years from now you can get the apology you deserve for actually using scientific data uh, to back up your arguments here today. Um, 2014 is the warmest year ever recorded. Is that correct, Dr. Titley? Uh, yes, Senator, that's what I understand. That's what you understand. Now, what would that be based on? Science? A whole lot of thermometers, yes, sir. A whole bunch of thermometers, a very, very sophisticated technology. So this is going back to the, to the beginning of the measurement of the temperature of the planet using thermometers. So that goes back to 1880, huh? 1870. Uh, now, I'm told that the first six months of this year are the warmest six months ever recorded on the history of the planet. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir, and I think that now extends to the warmest uh, November as well, so we're up to 11 months in Canada. The warmest October and the warmest November now ever recorded using thermometers, the same measurement for about 150 years right now, huh? very you know, clear calculations that have been made. And so, yeah, so we're, we're, I guess we're pretty much... 150 years into the 359 years to, uh, to getting kind of the apology from those who are the deniers. Now, you know, in, in, uh, in Paris right now, we've got just about every single, you know, scientist in the world, every country in the world is there, all saying the, pa the planet is dangerously warming and that the cause of it is human activity. Even the Pope said that. It's dangerous to name a Jesuit who taught high school chemistry. You actually get somebody who says that you know, it is happening and it's caused by human beings and um, uh, that there's a moral responsibility to do something about it. So this panel that we have in this committee, this last redoubt uh, of denial <laughs> oh. you know, in, on the planet, uh, of all the countries on the planet, this last place you know, has the flip of witnesses that we have every other place. We have four here who deny it <laughs> and one who believes in the science. And so we, we, we clearly here are at a historic moment uh, and, uh, and there'll be a day when you get your apology, uh, Dr. Titley, for being kind of the sacrificial lamb here, like Galileo, uh, standing up what? for actual science. And so what we have here is just one of the clear national security challenges of our time just as we were focused on protecting the planet from the threat of communism in the 1950s, we need to be focused on protecting the planet from the threat of climate change now. We sit here in the space, the science, and the competitiveness subcommittee, which has oversight over NASA. We should all be cognizant of the fact that NASA was established in 1958, when this country felt the very real threat of communism. If we had ignored that threat in the 1950s, America wouldn't be the leader it is today. And it was in response to the threat of communist domination in space when 53 years ago, President Kennedy <clears throat> announced the ambitious goal of sending an American safely to the moon. He told us that we would need a giant rocket made of new metal alloys, some of which had not yet been invented. It would have to be fitted together with a precision better than the finest watch, and it would have to be returned to Earth safely at speeds never before reached by humans, and it would all have to be done in less than eight years. President Kennedy urged us to be bold, and America responded to his call, not by saying it couldn't be done, not by denying the threat, but by boldly putting our scientists and our engineers to work, protecting our nation and the world. Today, a growing global danger lies in the cascading impacts of climate change. Temperatures are increasing. Sea levels are rising. More extreme rains are falling. The ocean is becoming more acidic. And all of this has consequences for people, public health, and for prosperity. That's why our national security, military, and intelligence leaders have warned that a changing climate can worsen the tensions that are fueling terrorism and conflicts around the world. More than 50 years ago, we looked to the scientific community to help protect our nation from communism. Today, the same scientific rigor
we use to send astronauts to space is used to evaluate our changing climate. And just as President Kennedy urged our nation to be bold in the space race, the global community is meeting in Paris right now to hold bold action to protect our climate. But the Republicans' message to the world is, Houston, we do not have a problem. No. And that is the wrong scientific message. They, they are once again questioning the integrity of the scientific community and the basic scientific principles behind climate change. The truth is, the only thing that requires a serious scientific investigation is why we are holding today's hearing in the first place. Climate science stands on a foundation of more than 150 years of research. Laboratory experiments demonstrated carbon dioxide traps heat in the same year that Charles Darwin published on the origin of the species. So we should listen to the planet's doctors. The more fossil fuels we burn, the more carbon pollution we put in the air, the higher the risk for catastrophic climate consequences. But the Republicans' response to this existential challenge is to insist that the brightest minds of the United States of America, who once figured out how to send a man to the moon and bring him back safely, can't possibly figure out how to generate energy from anything other than burning decaying plants that have been sitting underground since the time of the dinosaurs. But we all know that failure is not an option. There is no planet B. We must solve this problem. The science dictates that we solve this problem. Mm -hmm. It is time to stop denying the science and start deploying the climate solutions. Admiral Titley, we've heard a lot about temperature measurements today. When I'm feeling sick and I go to the doctor, she takes my temperature, but the doctor always checks my blood pressure, listens to my heart and lungs, and looks at my ears, eyes, and throat to get a broader assessment of my health. This chart behind me is NOAA's assessment of the Earth's climatic vital signs. Yes, temperatures are going up, but so is the heat in the ocean, the sea level, and the humidity. And snow and glaciers and Arctic sea ice are going down. Do you agree, Dr. Titley, that a wide range of independent observations indicate that the planet is warming and that climate is changing and that there are no emergency rooms for planets and we have to engage in preventative care? Yes, sir. What would you say is the basis for your decision? Is it based on data or is your answer based on dogma? based on the evidence, sir. It's based on the evidence, and I agree with you, the, uh, Admiral, and I thank you so much for your service to our country, both in the active Navy and here today before this committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you, Senator Markey. Senator Nelson. Uh, Dr. Carey wanted to respond to oh, Senator. Is it possible for me to respond? You, you, you basically. I did not ask for uh, uh, ask you a question. Did really? Did why can't Why can't she respond, did Senator? Yeah, was, Dr. Curry, you're, you're you in, to, you impugned her integrity. I uh, think she's okay. entitled. You, you are to welcome to respond, Dr. Curry. I was basically called a denier that I'm denying science. Did you read my written testimony? Are you aware that the IPCC and the consensus has no explanation for the increase of ice in the Antarctic? Are you aware that they have no explanation for the fact that the rate of sea level rise from 1920 to 1950 was as large, if not larger, as it currently is? Are you aware that temperatures have been warming for more than 200 years and that in the 20th century, 40% of the warming occurred before 1950 when carbon dioxide was not a factor in the warming. Okay, they, and I could go on and on. Many of these issues are raised in my written testimony. And are, most of it is pulled from the IPCC itself. The IPCC has an explanation for, so it says, for warming during the period 1975 to 2000. It doesn't have an explanation for the flat period since 2000. It doesn't have an explanation Dr. Mayor, for I the early century. Doctor, as I just said in my testimony, corroborated by Dr. Titley, this so, is the warmest <laughs> year ever recorded. Nope. Last year is the warmest year ever recorded until this year. This is the warmest November ever recorded. October is the warmest 
uh, yeah. October ever recorded. You do not have an answer for that, Dr. Mayor. Yes. You, yes. you continue to ignore the chart which Dr. Titley has over his uh, uh, left shoulder. He has documented for this committee the warming trend which is inexorable, inevitable in terms of its consequences unless we take action here. That's the science no, you're having a hard time issue, in responding to here, The issue is Dr. what Mayor. is causing the warming. Is it natural variability or is it humans? Like Galileo, he said, no, the science. Are you the aware? Science, the science is clear. You are depending upon are you something that perhaps is God made rather than dependent upon well, something that is man made, which is anthropogenic and, and uh, documented by 97% of all <clears throat> of the science. Are you saying there's that. no natural variability, Senator? What there I were alligators at the North Pole. What, uh, what was that? Was that you and your SUV? What I am saying is that this warming mm -hmm. is something that while it may have a variability year to year in specific parts of the planet, that the trend is straight up. Yeah, and do you Dr. know what, do you know what the little ice age was, is, Senator? And again, it is climate change. We had 110 uh, inches of snow in Boston last year right. with measurements of water 21 degrees <coughs> warmer than normal off of the coast of Massachusetts, okay? This was an unusual event for us. The warming of the ocean intensifies the amount of precipitation when Arctic air hits that water. Now, if you want to deny that, if you want to ignore <coughs> that these changes are taking place and that they're having a dramatic impact, then you are in the right place. You know what you the winters were right like at Plymouth at Rock? Right Do you know what the winters were like at Plymouth Rock, Senator? Well, here is the thing. Uh, we, you don't. How long has your family been in Massachusetts? Uh, we are new arrivals, hmm. and, uh, and I have to admit... You should have been there in 1750. Uh, the, I, the, the Irish weren't arriving in 1750, so I apologize for being late uh, to the country, and I'll have to chastise my grandparents uh, for not hmm. leaving until hmm. uh, the economic conditions in 1902 hmm. forced them here. But that notwithstanding, there is as much consensus that man is causing climate change as there is in Galileo's original theory. And what for, percentage for which, of climate change is man causing, Senator? Excuse me, sir? What percentage of climate change is anthropogenic? Well, according to the scientists mm -hmm. uh, who, uh, who are in Paris right now, uh, which would fill pretty much the entire space of the building in which we're in right now, uh, and the number of deniers would still be the ones who are at. Yeah, what's are the percentage, the, Senator? The, are you aware of a recent survey of the professional members of the American Meteorological Society when asked the question, how much is the recent change is natural versus human cause? 52% of the membership said it was majority Dr. human Titley, cause. Dr. Titley, could you uh, respond to that question in terms of what you believe is the amount of um, warming that is relatable to uh, human activity? Yeah, thank, thanks, Senator. Uh, right now, there is, as has been pointed out, there are natural variations, things like volcanoes, things like changes in sunlight, and then there's something called internal variations. <clears throat> these are the oscillations or the, basically the back and forth of the ocean currents. So even if you had no change in forcing, but what we are doing is we are changing in forcing. And I think the IPCC has come down uh, pretty strong along with multiple, multiple national academy panels saying that the human-caused forcing is very, very significant. Uh, that doesn't mean there isn't natural variability. It doesn't mean there is not internal variability, but the human-caused forcing is very significant, and that's, I think, what we need to need to deal with. Thank you, Dr. And I, and I, 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 I just think I agree with you, and I agree with this pope. I disagree with the pope in 1632. This pope is correct, and we have a moral responsibility to act. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Nelson. 